The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Emily Enenwebo. What comes to mind when you hear that someone has gone gluten-free in their diet? Is gluten that bad for you? And is staying away from gluten the right choice for you? Well, tonight we are breaking down the issues over gluten right here on the show. Joining me is holistic nutritionist Rita Mustafa, who will give us a 411 when it comes to going gluten-free. Welcome to the show. Well, welcome back to the show, yeah, Rita. Thanks, Emily. Glad to be back. So this is a brand new topic, a brand new discussion on gluten. Mm -hmm. Because it's everywhere now. You hear it all the time. Everywhere. Yep. I don't eat gluten. Nothing in my diet is gluten. So I'm going to ask, let's, let's great, get straight down to it. What is gluten? Okay, so gluten basically stands for, for the name of a bunch of proteins that are found in, in certain foods, mainly wheat, right? So things like breads and pastas mm -hmm. and cereals, but also in things like rye. So rye breads, um, there's, it's also in barley. Um, and then things like spelt and kamut, which are not as common for people to, to know, but yep. those also are grains that contain gluten. So gluten describes grains, and are the grains also proteins? Is that what you mean? So it, gluten describes the protein. Mm. So each of these foods has this protein in it, ah. and people are reacting to the protein in these foods. Okay, so that's a good explanation because mm -hmm. I've heard it all. And I, I'm like, is, is gluten like wheat? Is gluten in wheat? Like, I, mm -hmm. I guess I don't really know the distinction. Yeah, so it's so. almost like vitamin C in an orange, right? So ah. it, it's it's a protein that's in the pro, in the food itself. And so um, people are, that's what people are reacting to is that protein in the, in the specific foods. So when you say people are reacting to, is, do you find that more people in our society today are allergic and sensitive to it? Is that what people are doing and reacting I think to? people are becoming more aware of how they feel when they eat gluten products. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, you know, there's been a lot more awareness through television shows, through celebrities, things like that, about gluten. And, you know, so people are, are starting to become more aware of, okay, wheat does contain gluten and things like that. When I eat gluten, I feel bloated, I feel tired, I feel whatever it is. So if people, I think, are starting to, to be more aware and that's why I think people are just, you know, going gluten-free. Mm -hmm. So is gluten bad for you? Is it bad? It really depends. I think if, I mean, if there's an allergy, obviously, yes, it's going to be bad for you. If you're a celiac, which means, you know, you actually um, have an autoimmune problem with gluten, then yes, it's bad mm. for you. Um, but other people have, like, what I call a sensitivity. So it's, you know, the more they put into their body, the worse they'll feel. Mm. And others have an intolerance, so same idea. They just don't break it down properly, and they, again, they get those symptoms of just don't feel well, sluggish, gas, bloating, like all the digestive stuff that goes with it. It's interesting that you bring up celiac. That is something you'll be discussing later yes. on in the show. Mm -hmm. So, Rita, what are, I know there are f sort of main food groups that contain the gluten. Let's go through them step by step because I know you brought some examples here. Yeah, so wheat is the top of the list. So wheat probably contains the most amount of gluten. In products so, like bread? So bread, mm -hmm. um, bread, wraps, uh, pasta, pizza. Um, pasta. So you, it, it's just you have to stay away from pasta if you're sensitive well, to gluten. Pasta made from wheat, yes. Yeah. So you can do other types of pasta, which I'll show you throughout the show. But yes, pasta is one of those foods that contains gluten, right? So so here we go. This is what kind of? Those are just this egg is, noodles. Just okay, regular so this is egg, egg noodles. noodles. I see it. You see it all the time, and it says, okay, it says right there, wheat. Mm -hmm. So wheat has gluten in it. Correct. Okay, and. Um, if, if you want to go gluten-free, stay away from all types of pasta that contains wheat. Right. So you would stay away from that and maybe choose a rice pasta or maybe choose mm. a corn pasta or, um, you know, spelt. Uh, not spelt. Spelt actually contains gluten. But buckwheat, that, that's gluten-free. So there's a lot of different options and not that are, that are wheat-free. So it doesn't mean you, you can never have pasta again or you can never have a piece of bread again. It's just going to be different. So before we get to the other groups, can you distinguish for us the difference then between gluten-free and wheat, or gluten and wheat? Because I'm still okay. getting confused yeah. about so the two. Yeah, so when someone is gluten-free, that means they're avoiding not only wheat, but they're avoiding the rye, the barley, 
um, and sometimes oats. When mm. someone is just wheat free, they're just avoiding wheat. So they can still have um, barley, they can still have rye, they can still have spelt. So that's where the distinction is. So if it's just wheat free, it's think of breads, pastas. Mm -hmm. If it's gluten free, it's breads, pastas plus. So if you're going gluten free, then can you say that you're basically ab abstaining from more foods then if compared to if you're going wheat free? There seems like there's more that you would have to stay away from if you're avoiding gluten. I don't know if it's, um, I mean, obviously you're going to be reading labels. You're going to be reading mm. a lot more labels um, because they like to hide, you know, wheat and different things. Yes. And, you know, and sometimes you're not even aware, like um, a soy sauce. You think soy sauce, but it's, it, 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 it will have wheat soy, in it. A soy no, in it. But there is wheat in there, so that means ah. there is gluten, right? So, so it's, yeah, it's reading a lot more labels and just being aware of what can you substitute instead of. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, you've been a nutritionist for a while now. I'm sure many of your clients have gone uh, gluten-free or want to stay away from it. What have they said to you about this sort of going gluten-free diet? You know, in the beginning, it is, um, it is a challenge for some people to just start reading labels and, you know, go through their cupboards and just get rid of everything that has wheat in it. But once they follow it and they you know, and they notice the difference, you know, they feel better, they have more energy, they sleep better, they aches and pains go away. You know, it, it's kind of a sacrifice that people are going to be willing to make because they just feel that much better. Well, what I've learned from the show, speaking to, you know, different nutritionists, Rita, it really is about a lifestyle change. You Absolutely. have to commit. It's not that there aren't any options out there for you in terms of food selection. It's just, is that is it the commitment? It is. It's, it's a commitment and exactly what you said, it's a lifestyle change. Right? You can yeah. do it for a few months and feel great, but if you're just going to go back to it, then, you know, then, then you're just going to go back to your same yeah. old problems. So, yeah, it really is, you know, figuring out is it, is gluten really your problem and, you know, is it, how severe is that problem? Mm -hmm. And the symptoms that somebody can So the symptoms, display? Um, again, depending on the severity of what they have. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes in with a celiac, they'll have very, uh -huh. you know, they'll have a lot of the digestive type complaints, the diarrhea, the constipation, the pain, the abdominal pain, mm -hmm. um, things like that. If someone comes in with a sensitivity, they'll actually come in with the same symptoms. Uh -huh. um, so, it's so, so sometimes that's why we need to do things like go gluten-free to figure out, is it a, is it a sensitivity? Is it a, an allergy? What is it? Do you find out usually, you know, later in your life when you get older that you are more sensitive to foods? Is that when, you know, these things come up in your opinion? I think over time we just, you know, we overdo it and mm. our bodies get tired and, and the body's very, you know, it, it tries its best, its best to adapt, <laughs> right? So it'll, it will try and try and try and then it'll eventually it will just say, you know what, this is not working for me anymore. I know. So it really, I guess it is knowing how your body reacts to certain foods, knowing you know, how foods make you feel, right? Exactly. And then just going on that right path for yeah, you. Yeah, it's awareness. It's being aware. Perfect. So when we come back, mm -hmm. you're going to talk more about gluten. We're going to talk about celiac disease. That's right. So stay tuned. More on going gluten-free when we come back from commercial. The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. On the next episode of Living Disabled, we are talking about employment issues and solutions for finding a job for those living with disabilities. That's coming up next time on Living Disabled. Hello, I'm Stuart McLean. The Nature Conservancy of Canada has helped save more than two million acres of ecologically significant land right across Canada. But there are still hundreds of places facing direct and immediate threat. NCC needs your support to protect these lands and the species that depend on them. Join the fight to save Canada's ecological treasures. Visit natureconservancy.ca. That's natureconservancy.ca. 
coming up Friday on Community Connection. A deserving family moves into their new Habitat home. Having a new house, uh, which we can call our own, uh, is going to be a new beginning, a new house, new beginning. We're looking forward to almost starting fresh again and just having new opportunities in a new community. Tonight we're talking all about going gluten-free and don't forget our phone lines are open all hour long for your questions and comments if you have any questions or comments about gluten. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the game tonight. Okay, so in the first segment, Rita, you talked about a very important term there, celiac disease. Mm -hmm. Another term that's in the news everywhere, you hear it all the time. What is celiac disease? So celiac disease is actually what's referred to as an autoimmune disease. So mm -hmm. what that means is whenever someone with celiac disease uh, eats or ingests something with gluten in it, so gluten, that protein, um, the body starts to attack itself and mainly the small intestine, mm -hmm. right? So it starts to actually destroy the small intestine. Okay, that does not sound good No, at it all. is not good at all. What happens then with your, I guess, your diet and is that... Like, how is it connected to gluten? So, it doesn't matter how the person gets gluten into their system. So, I mean, this happens, I believe this happens over a long period of time because mm. uh, statistically it takes between 11 to 12 years to get diagnosed as celiac. Really? Because a lot of people present initially with things like IBS type symptoms. Yep. So they get, yep. they just go away thinking, well, it's just IBS and oh, I have an IBS flare up or whatever it is. So, you know, 10 years of not taking care of this autoimmune mm -hmm. disease, which is slowly, you know, think of it as slowly breaking down the small intestine, mm -hmm. you know, it'll eventually get to a point when people do finally get diagnosed that they're very, very ill. Wow. Yeah. And it, it is, it, it's all focused on the intestine. I know you brought mm -hmm. in a graphic yeah. to really show, I, I guess, the difference between what? A healthy intestine versus someone with celiac disease. Okay. Okay. So, the, um, the visual is pretty simple. Do we have the visual Yeah, yet? we're going to uh, bring it up in, in a, a few seconds. So is it just, is it your large intestine or just your small intestine? It's the small intestine. It's the small intestine. Okay, so what do we see so here? So the top, the top image, you'll see, that's basically anatomy. So what you'll see is, mm. is the small intestine, which is found in your abdomen, obviously. And um, the small intestine is, is the main focus of someone with celiac disease. So the picture below that is... Um, actually a portion of the small intestine. So imagine the small intestine as a tube. And so we're going to look at this tube. We're going to look inside, inside the wall of mm. this tube. And so someone with a healthy small intestine um, will have on the inside of this tube or inside mm -hmm. of the small mm -hmm. intestine um, the, these hair-like projections. So the left or right uh, side of the bottom of the diagram? The left. It's kind of small. Okay, so yeah. the left-hand side. So on the side. left side, and, it's, and you'll see it's um, compared to the other one, which is quite flat, right? Mm -hmm. So the one with the hair-like projections, what happens there is when we eat our food, when we break down our food, the nutrients actually go into these little hair-like projections, and that's how we absorb our nutrients. Ah, okay. Okay? Makes Someone sense. who has celiac disease, because that gets destroyed, see how it's nice and mm -hmm. flat now, mm -hmm. so nothing is, nothing is being absorbed. So when by the it's time, flat like that. That's right. Uh, nothing is being absorbed, so they're eating and eating and eating, but they're losing weight, uh, they have chronic yeah. diarrhea, they're mal they have malabsorption, um, you know, anemia, osteoporosis, so they, they basically are not in good shape. So as a holistic nutritionist, I mean, it just seems like, would your recommendation be really listen to your body? Because all these symptoms, it sounds really uncomfortable. And if every single time you're eating, you're feeling bloated, like we were mm -hmm. talking about, you're feeling, you know, the IBS, yes. sh should you really get yourself checked? I would, I would recommend testing, you know, if, you know, just, and not to say that everyone with irritable bowel IBS is going to end up with celiac. Mm. That, that's not what I'm saying. But you know, if you do have these symptoms that make you uncomfortable and you know you 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 know gas, bloating, yeah. and pain, well, that means there's an imbalance somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to get checked out, come to see a, a practitioner that can actually do some testing mm -hmm. on you, find out if it's a food-related issue, you know, especially gluten, and usually it's gluten, and sometimes it's also gluten and dairy at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really important to get tested. And, and speaking of tests, mm -hmm. you did bring in an example of, uh, are these one of the tests that you, I guess, 
show some of your clients when, when they come visit you? Right, so this is one of the tests. So if someone wants specifically to get tested for celiac disease, um, this What's is... What's in here? So exactly. this is a really simple test. It really is a bunch of uh, lancets or uh, little needles. Yep. And what we do is we be just uh, pick the prick the finger, and we take blood from your finger, and we saturate. Guy, yep. Yeah, and we saturate some strips, and that gets sent off to a lab, and it'll come back and and tell us, you know, whether whether there's uh, celiac specifically for problem. celiac. This is specific for yeah. celiac. Yeah. Okay. There's also other testing, same idea, we take some blood from your finger, we saturate strips, we send it off to a lab, and it will test not only for gluten, but other things. So is it wheat, is it rye, is it dairy, is it eggs, is it, what else could it be? So we test about 96 different foods, just to, just to oh. make sure, yeah. So how young do you recommend somebody to, to take this type of test? Are we talking about like your you know, your child, small child, or your teenager, because it seems like if you know if you are sensitive to it, the earlier the better. Absolutely. So, I mean, with kids, it's it's tough. If you're if you're bringing a yeah. little infant in, you know, it's going to be tough for me to start taking blood. So, you might have to go to your medical doctor or okay. you know, go to a naturopathic yes. doctor who can draw blood. You know, something a little bit easier. But you know, once you get into teenage kind of teenagehood and older, mm -hmm. it. it you know, this can easily be done in like five, ten minutes in my office, and we send it off. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to talk about a bit about some, uh, I guess, products that have gluten or that don't have gluten. You wanted to talk about wheatgrass, right, Rita? Yeah. We actually have it right here. What's sort of the misconception when it comes to wheatgrass? So wheatgrass, although it is has the word wheat in there, yes. um, because it's still a young grass uh, and it is not a plant at this point, it is considered gluten-free. Really? Yes. Because it's not considered a plant. It's just... not a plant. It's it's still just it's the grass. It's a very young stage of of the plant, and so it is considered um, uh, gluten free. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen wheat grass juice. I mean, it's empty right now, but it. Yeah, it's so a, how is it good for you? Wheatgrass contain. It's very good. It's very good at alkalinizing the body. It's great for minerals detoxing. It's really a great. Um, like energy booster, it's a it's a great product. Um, it, it is grass, so I'm not going to lie to you. It's you know. It I was going to say, how does it taste? It comes <laughs> it comes in these little like cubes, and they it smells and looks like grass. It's you know, but you just like... hide it in your orange juice or uh, apple juice or wherever you want, and it's fine. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to come back from break. We're going to learn more about gluten free products. So stay tuned. More on gluten free when we come back. <laughs> Welcome back to In The Know. Tonight's topic is all about going gluten-free. So Rita, we were talking about celiac disease mm -hmm. in the last segment. So we're gonna switch gears. If somebody doesn't have celiac, why should they avoid gluten? So the reasons are gonna be different depending on, on the person, right? Yes. So some t if someone doesn't have a you know celiac disease or doesn't have an allergy to it, but they still find they have some digestive issues. Um, they may find that just going off gluten makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we call an intolerance, right? So when you eat gluten and you feel kind of uh, sluggish mm -hmm. and not well and gassy or bloated, then that's either an intolerance or a sensitivity. So that, that could be one reason why people would stay away from it. gluten. Okay. Uh, for other people, it's inflammation. So joint pain, arthritis, just aches and pains in the body and uh, chronic fatigue, that type of thing. Sometimes those people, if they go off of gluten, they feel much better. So is there a connection there then um, with gluten and, like you just said, joint pain and arthritis? That's, yes, that's one, of, that's one of the symptoms is joint pains, um, wow. arthritis, um, uh, along with digestive issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not always mm -hmm. that someone presents with digestive issues. It can be like a joint pain or it can be maybe it's eczema for somebody else. It's really it's really different for every individual. 
So how do you know if, um, I mean, I guess what, is some of, what are some of the symptoms when it comes to sensitivity and intolerances? So sensitivity, um, again, it involves an immune reaction, so, but we call it a delayed immune reaction. So if someone with a sensitivity eats gluten, let's say, eats some bread or, mm -hmm. or a sandwich, um, they might not notice anything until hours later, maybe even not mm -hmm. in, until the next day. So th that's the sensitivity. And, and the symptoms are going to be different for everybody, right? So I mentioned the joint pain. For somebody else, it might be constipation. Mm -hmm. For someone else, it might be diarrhea. So it really just, there's so many different symptoms. And it's not just classic textbook. Like mm -hmm. someone comes in, these symptoms, OK, yeah. great, now I know. It's different it's with everybody, different for everybody. I can imagine. Yeah. So when somebody says, I'm going gluten free, is bread and wheat the number one thing that they should stay away from first and foremost? And I've that's usually the hardest one, yeah. right? So when, yeah. when someone's going gluten-free, they kind of feel a little bit lost because, well, if I can't have bread, and it's not that they can't have bread, mm -hmm. it just it has to be bread made from something else. And rice bread, if you, you know, if you were, if, if I had a loaf of, like, regular bread, it's nice and fluffy. Think of yes. Wonder Bread, right? Nice and fluffy I like and spongy. That kind of bread. Yeah. That's the gluten. The gluten <laughs> okay, does that's the that. Gluten. That's the gluten that does that. When you go buy a piece of, or, or, a, or rice bread, it's, it's, it's solid, it's, it's a rock, it's not very soft, it's mm -hmm. not spongy because there's no gluten there, right? So, so that's one of the breads you would recommend. So they can definitely go out and buy rice free. bread. Mm -hmm. And again, it will take some getting used to. Um, but some people are okay with it and some people just choose to avoid it because they just don't like it. So what, are there, what um, other wheat alternatives are there out for people who want to go gluten free? So um, wheat alternatives. So if it, let's say someone wants to do a wrap. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. wraps are usually made with wheat. So they again, they can go to a health food store and they can easily find uh, rice wraps. Mm -hmm. So wraps that are just made from rice flour instead of wheat flour. And so now you can make your wrap. It's just again, it's different. It's it's not going to taste exactly the same, but at least you can make a wrap. So what are your recommendations then, when if somebody comes in and approaches you and says, Rita, I want to go gluten free. I mean, you know, really drastically changing 180 mm -hmm. from this diet to a gluten-free diet. What's the first step that you tell them to take in this in this sort of journey? So I, I usually will give them a list to to tell. First of all, you know, find out where the wheat is to begin with or mm -hmm. gluten, um, and then here are the alternatives. Mm -hmm. So you want bread? Try some rice bread. You want wraps? Try some rice wraps. You want um, couscous? Try some quinoa. Right, so it, mm. it's showing them the alternative. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I don't want people to go away feeling deprived when they just, you know, when they either decide to go gluten free or if, you know, through testing I've found that gluten is an issue for them. You know, I don't want them to feel deprived. I still want them to know they can still eat plenty of things. It's just different. Now, let's switch gears and talk about kids because does gluten have a really, you know, a big effect on kids in terms of, you know, hidden sources of wheat and uh, children when it comes to autism. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection there? There is. There, there, they actually have done quite a few um, studies with autistic kids where actually the diet uh, recommended for autistic kids is not only gluten-free but also casein-free or uh, dairy-free. Mm -hmm. So eliminating both gluten and dairy. Uh, seems to help autistic kids even with just like um, you know connect eye connection just being able being more a little bit more verbal just a little mm -hmm. bit more you know um, uh, attentive or their be better attention span so there really is a connection between uh, gluten gluten and autism yes because whenever I hear about you know kids going gluten free because they really they really need to Wheat, bread, and milk seems like something <laughs> that they cannot have. And to me, that seems like a really huge, you know, part of a child's diet. Yeah. So how do you stay away from something like milk? I mean, here we have <laughs> your standard milk carton. You're, exactly. Um, Why so, is this bad? Well, for, for, for whatever reason, um, especially in autistic children, mm -hmm. um, they just seem to react to, again, the protein in the milk. The protein in it's the, the proteins yeah. that they're reacting yeah. to so when you take that out of their diet um, it, it just makes things a lot easier for them and again it's not that they can't have milk it's just going to be different so mm -hmm. now they're going to have cereal in the morning they instead of having you know mini wheats which is wheat they might have 
um, you know, rice cereal, but they're going to put almond milk in it or rice milk. So it's, you know, you can still have cereal with milk, it's just mm -hmm. different cereal with different milk. So do you tell parents to sort of take that uh, step by step when it comes to introducing mm -hmm. <laughs> dairy-free or gluten-free products into their child's life? Yeah, so a lot of times, you know, you don't want to just automatically like change their milk because they're going to notice the difference. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, usually I'll have them do you know, half milk, half almond milk, and then it gradually it all becomes just almond milk or rice milk, and then, you know, once they get used to the taste, then they won't miss it. And it just seems like there's more options. There really are more options when you step into the grocery store and there's the whole organic or, you know, gluten-free exactly, yeah. um, products. And there's lots to choose from. A lot to choose from. And, and nice that it's being available in the grocery store, not just having to go to a health yeah. food store all the time. Perfect. So when we come back, we'll talk more about gluten-free, and later on in the show, we'll actually start cooking yeah. <laughs> with four well, gluten-free yeah, recipes. That's right. Stay tuned. More on In the Know when we come back. Tonight we're talking all about going gluten-free with holistic nutritionist Rita Mustafa. So Rita, let's, let's get down to the question here. Can gluten make you fat? So... <laughs> <laughs> Million well, dollar question. They're, they're, we'll, we'll break that up into two questions. Okay. Because, um, yes, if someone has a sensitivity to gluten, it can cause inflammation and can make people um, not necessarily fat, but um, unable to lose weight. Really? Yes. So that, that inflammation can cause people to be overweight. And that's why when people go gluten free, a lot of times they'll, um, you know, the side effect is that they lose weight. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess that's, that's, that's why a nice it's the thing. fad and trend now, mm -hmm. right? Because, oh, okay, yeah. eliminating this from my diet can make me lose weight. But obviously, we've been talking about the health benefits as well, too. Exactly. Right? Um, but on the, on the flip side of that, just because you go gluten-free doesn't mean it's calorie-free. So you still have to mm. be aware of what you're eating and how many calories you're putting in. You know, just because you're not eating wheat bread and you're eating rice bread mm -hmm. doesn't mean the rice bread has no calories. It's still... It's the never-ending balance, Rita, exactly. of trying to stay healthy <laughs> and right. eat the right foods for yourself. But you've brought in a lot of products here. I'm mm -hmm. kind of interested to know uh, more detail about certain ones here. Yeah. Um, gluten alternatives or substitutes, substitutes we're talking yep. about. Can we talk about this sweet rice flour? Because it, it looks like rice. Right, so um, so when I, um, when I put gluten-free flour mixes together mm -hmm. at home, what I do is I, I make a combination of different gluten-free flours. So um, sweet rice flour is one of the flours I'll use. But because it's made from white rice, I tend not to use mm -hmm. a lot of that. Oh, right, okay. so I would rather use something mm -hmm. like brown rice flour mm -hmm. or quinoa flour, something that's whole grain that actually has nutrients. Okay, to that's it. a key word, whole grain. There. Yes, so you right. want you want to choose more of the whole grain. So, you know, again, going back to that that weight issue, if you're if you're going gluten free and you're buying stuff that's made with white rice flour and tapioca starch and potato flour, starch, you know, things like that, those are those are not going to provide you a lot of nutrients, mm -hmm. and it's just empty calories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're going gluten free, look for healthy alternatives. Look for look for um, uh, buckwheat flour. Look for Can quinoa we, yeah, flour. Yeah, here on the so side, what do we have? So what do we have here? This one is organic quinoa, quinoa flour. Ooh, mm -hmm. So, so why is this good for you? So quinoa, which is uh, the grain that we use to make, you know, um, as an alternative to white rice. Yeah. So we just ground it up into a flour, and you can add it to any gluten, gluten-free. I didn't uh, even know that you mix. could do that. I didn't even know. I thought quinoa was always in the little buds, yeah. little grains. Anything that you can buy and as a grain will will come as a flour. And you can bake with this. You can yeah. cook with this. This is just. 
I guess your substitute or alternative when it comes to you, flour? You would use it in a mix. So you might use mm. brown rice flour and then use maybe half of it quinoa flour mm -hmm. and you're just sort of, you're going to play with the amounts based on, you know, the flavors that you like. Um, another alternative that uh, a lot of similar, people slip, uh, turn okay. to is chickpea flour. A little bit more thicker, seems a little bit more dense. Yeah, so that's going to make for flour. a very dense type of whatever it is you're making. Yeah. If you're making a pancake or a bread, it's going to be a little bit heavier, right? So, mm. um, but uh, a lot of uh, gluten-free products are uh, being made from chickpea flour Very or good. bean flour, right? Very good. Um, so there are options here. There's lots. Lots I mean, of options. What's this, arrowroot? So arrowroot, so... I've seen this brand before, so what so do you... So that's used in gluten-free flour mixes to give things... Um, to, so that it has the ability to bind. So remember that... Arrowroot. Yeah, so arrowroot or even tapioca, those are starches basically, and it helps to thicken up the mixture and make it stick together. Basically, mm -hmm. if you want to think of it that way. That's good for baking then. Yeah, we use this it for baking. You can use it to, um, let's say you're making a gravy, right? Some people would use wheat to, to um, thicken up the gravy, ah, but you can use this or starch. you can use tapioca yeah. or you can use brown rice flour now. So arrowroot, it says here, is made from the dried root of a tropical plant. That's right. Yeah. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's so many options on yeah. the market. And going even to food products, right? So this one here, that's... Um, yeah, I saw this. I, I, saw, I got a glimpse of this when we put it on the table. It's a gluten-free pizza kit. That's right. Well, that's already gotten my attention right there. Right? So people go gluten-free. Yeah. Oh, my God, I can't have my pizza. Can't what am it. I going to do? That thick, nice crust. Yep. So now it's you can still have pizza. It's just made it's from something a little different. And uh, But there's no need to not ever have pizza again. It's just going to be different. So is going gluten-free, Rita, will it take a hit on your wallet? Like, it just seems like to change your diet, there will be a change in the expenses. Why is it, like, a little bit more pricier for these products, would you say? Um, maybe because they're just not as well-known at mm -hmm. this point. But I think the, the pricing is not that off. You know, it's, it's, because it's found in grocery stores, it's pretty reasonably priced, I find, a lot of the gluten-free stuff. Um, if you're going something with a pre-mix, pre something like that, obviously you're going to pay a little bit more. But if you look at the ingredients, you could probably easily just go and get some flowers at a bulk store and make up your own flour. And you can easily, you know, make up your own products yourself. But to begin with, those come in very handy. Handy, convenient packages, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So or do they offer um, gluten-free products in the bulk stores now? Absolutely. Yeah. That's where I get a lot of my flours. So rice flour, um, buckwheat flour, any of the starches, um, the lasagna noodles there. I got that at the bulk store, mm -hmm. but you can get that even at the grocery store now. Um, so the bulk stores are really great in terms of what they're carrying now. Okay. Well, I mean, there's, it seems like there's a lot of alternatives. There's a lot of options. So for viewers who are watching at home, Rita, like, what can you tell them in terms of changing the mentality when it comes to, you know, gluten-free products? Is it, is it possible to go, you know, this way and not it change drastically your whole lifestyle? You know, I, I think it's, it's mindset. You know, when people come to my house, I always cook gluten-free. And it, I never tell them I'm cooking gluten-free. I just serve the food. Mm. And people eat it, and they don't question it, and they it's have seconds. So <laughs> obviously, they're liking it. But probably if I say to them, oh, this is gluten-free, they'd probably be a little standoffish, like, yeah. oh, well, it's not going to taste good. I guess it's, it true. is just a mentality yeah. thing, right? If you're saying, oh, this doesn't have any wheat or it's raw, people are automatically, exactly. it's they, not going to taste good. Exactly. So right? so it's really that mentality that, you know, if you think it's going to taste bad and you're not going to enjoy it, well, you know, that that's not a good way to go into it. Just, you know, experiment, find what you like. And, you know, there's great cookbooks. I, I do cooking classes all the time that are wheat-free and dairy-free. And, you know, people enjoy them. It's You can, you can create great food. Yeah. Okay, it sounds all good and yummy. Mm -hmm. And when we come back from break, we will actually get our hands dirty and start <laughs> making gluten-free recipes. So stay tuned. More in the know when we come back.
Tonight we're talking all about going gluten-free. And in this segment, we are going to get our hands dirty and start making gluten-free recipes. Mm -hmm. oh. And food items and, and food. food. I'm, I'm, I'm getting hungry just talking about <laughs> all the gluten-free options out there. So where do you want to start? Because I know you ha you brought a couple recipes here. There are a couple yeah. recipes. The first one is a recipe that um, is actually in one in my cookbook. And um, it's actually just... And can we just show, this is, you've been on the show before, this is mm -hmm. your book, Wheat-Free, Dairy-Free. Yes. And I've actually looked through this book and there are a lot of options when it comes to, you know, going things without wheat. I didn't Absolutely. think that you could bake or cook without wheat. Yeah, there's to be there's everything from muffins to um, desserts to soups to, you know, main dishes. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of everything. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, what are you going to make here? I'll okay, help you. Okay, so let's let's make some rice paper wraps. And the the reason why I like these is because they're so simple and easy and and they're great as a snack. They're great to put in your lunch. Mm -hmm. They're great when you come home from school or from work. Um, so basically, you start with the rice paper. Yes. So I've seen these seen these around rice paper, and like we said in the segments before, rice. Rice is gluten free. Is gluten free. Right. So, so this is an option. Yes. So gluten free. Uh, if someone is celiac, then you know they're going to be a little bit more cautious as to what products they okay. buy because there's always cross contamination issues that they might worry mm -hmm. about. But in general, rice is gluten free. So what we so do, what do we is we we just soak the rice paper in some water mm -hmm. for about 30 seconds or so until it gets nice and soft. Oh, it's really, really soft actually, here. I'm going to just put it on this yes. paper towel here to absorb some of the moisture. So I can pull it out now, right? Yeah, you can pull it out oh and just put it on on your work <laughs> it's surface. It's really flimsy. When we, put it in, when we put it in the water during commercial break, it was it's, like hard as a rock. It's solid, that's right. And now it's solid, right? Yeah. So it's pretty wet. What do you do next? And so now that you get to fill it with your favorite ingredients. Okay, so right? if we just so, pull this guy a little bit back, we yeah. can show what we're making here. Um, so I just grabbed what I had in my fridge today. Um, I have carrots there, I've got cucumber, I've got red pepper. Okay, so, so you can we definitely... Can put, we can start putting it in. Yeah, right? so let's let's put a few things here. So we've yes. got carrots, let's put... Some and cucumber and noodles. Pepper. Noodles is something you can eat if if you're gluten free. Right. So this is uh, brown rice noodles, and it's actually that package right here. Ah. It actually comes also in white, uh, white rice, but, a, but the of brown course, color, brown rice I'm is, is healthier, yeah. <laughs> right? So, and you can't really tell the difference. It's going to yeah. be wrapped up anyways. So, um, excuse my fingers. So you can, it's really obvious. Like this is this is brown. Yeah, it's brown yeah. rice, and it yeah. is gluten free. So you know, just nice. you cook it up three minutes in water, very very quick. Mm -hmm. So then I've just put some uh, rice um, looks good. rice noodles in there. And you can put lettuce, Yum. you can put avocado, um, whatever you like, right? So veggies. Mm -hmm. Basic rule: most of them do not contain gluten. No, <laughs> okay. veggies in general because do we're not talking contain about the proteins gluten. and that. That's okay. right. See, I'm learning. I'm slowly learning <laughs> that you should always just have fruits and veggies in your in your diet. Is there the way go. to go. Yeah. Okay. So and we this have this is a nice, easy way to do that. So noodles I'm just move that. and lettuce and is it cucumber or zucchini in there? I put cucumber, oh, okay. but you can put anything you like. Um, I've put steamed asparagus in there. Some people will put omelets in there. Whatever you like. Ah. So it's really your your. Um, so basically what Difference. I do is I start from the side and mm -hmm. I just take the sides in mm -hmm. and then I'll just get you to roll it down. So uh, where's the sauce? No sauce. So <laughs> you, should you refrain from putting any like extra condiments or sauces in there because we're, we're trying to go gluten free? No, you're still going to be able to make a sauce. Mm. Um, the soy sauce you're going to buy is going to be wheat free. So health food stores mm. carry them, regular grocery stores carry um, Wheat free soy sauce, so you can still make your sauce with, okay. I with like, soy. I like the sound of that. That is wheat free. I always free. like dipping yeah. my food and stuff. And so, and so that, that took us no time at all, yeah. right? So nice and quick. We'll save that you for can... the crew later. Let's cut that up in <laughs> and cut that up. pieces. Yeah, very <laughs> okay. simple and very easy so to make. So let's right? quickly make the next recipe. We have a few minutes left here. Yeah. Um, we're going to go dessert this time, right? Let's do dessert. <laughs> okay, so this, so this looks really yummy. is a recipe it that's, smells really good. that's available on uh, my website, oh, Oasis, okay. oasishealth.ca. And you opened this for me last time, Adam. <laughs> if you can open it, there you go. There we go. So it smells great. Like To me, it smells really kind of chocolatey and yummy and yeah, sugary. Yeah, so this is another quick, simple, throw everything in the food processor. Gluten free. Gluten free. So all this contains is walnuts. Uh, yeah. It contains dates. It contains cocoa powder. I actually put some carob powder in there also. Yeah. 
some vanilla extract, and that's it. You just process it. Mm. Uh, when you're all it smells really, really good. And then we're going to dump it's... it onto here, right? Yeah. So you can dump okay. it onto there. This is... I'm not the best at cooking here, Rita, <laughs> but this is this so, is be pretty simple. And I I like to use parchment paper because it's so easy yeah. to just yeah. shape things the way you want, and it, nothing sticks to it. So basically. It's sticking pretty well together. So yeah. in it again is are the dates, dates, and the nuts. Uh, I put walnuts in this one, uh, and then I'm just gonna flatten it out to whatever you know thickness I want. So it just kind of sticks together like that, right? Yeah, and it you did. just keep working it, right? So yeah. on air, it's obviously we're trying, you know, tell us the time. To do this. We're, we're doing it in a condensed time, right? Yeah. So that looks good, and it smells great. It really, really does smell yummy. Mm hmm. And these are kind of the version of your brownies then? So this would be a brownie. So I would continue to shape it until it looks obviously, um, you know, brownie. flat and even. Um, but you can also even take this and make them into bars, into little balls, mm -hmm. right? So these can be a nice little snack, a snack that way. I think the, the crew, they're, they're watering at the mouth just looking mm -hmm. at this, okay. And, and it's kind of like, is that, it's not oily, it's kind of just sugary, like the No, the it's oil. There Actually, what, there what is oil? a little bit of coconut oil coconut in there. Coconut oil, yeah. okay. And um, yeah, so there, take a little taste here absolutely. because it really smells really good. And I want to taste it. Mmm. -hmm. Mm okay, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. And again, is there chocolate in there or no? Cocoa powder. Yeah, I put cocoa powder in That's there. That's what's Can't drawing me to it. Cocoa powder. Yeah. Yes. I mean, so, it's a good, it, it's kind of like dense, so it could fill you up if you just want rich. a little like, snack, right? Honestly, like two little things like this would be enough to satisfy, uh, you know, any sweet tooth that anybody mm. might have. And, you know, no need to go look for cookies and things like that. And again, really simple, really easy to do. Really easy. Very Dates, easy. Dates, yeah. coconut oil, cocoa powder, all the good stuff. That was fun. Okay. <laughs> so when we come back, mm -hmm. we'll wrap it up. Talk more about going gluten-free, so stay tuned more on In The Know after the commercial break. To in the know tonight, we've been talking all about going gluten free with holistic nutritionist Rita Mustafa. So we made some recipes in the last segment. Filled my tummy up there. It was pretty good. good those brownies. So you know we've been talking all hour long about going gluten free. What's sort of the main message you know here when it when it comes to why you should eliminate gluten from your diet? Because it may not be for everybody, right? No, and you know it doesn't mean that everybody should avoid gluten, really. It depends on your health, the person's health. Um, and, you know, obviously if there's allergies or sensitivities, then you, you, you would do best to eliminate it just, just, for, just to feel better, to have more energy, get rid of gas and bloating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you don't really have those issues, you don't really have a lot of issues, digestive issues that you notice, or, you know, generally you're in very good health, then gluten might not be an issue for you. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to avoid gluten. If you're a typically healthy person, you know, diet's pretty normal. Do you recommend going gluten-free for a short amount of time, maybe like three months, six months, um, just to feel just a little bit better than you usually feel? Would you recommend that? Or once you go, Some, you should just stick to it? it again, it depends on the person. Sometimes mm -hmm. when, I, when I do detoxes with people, That's exactly I will actually detoxing. take gluten out along with some other foods. And so we're trying to give the body a break, right? Mm -hmm. So you take away foods that are generally considered inflammatory in the body and the body just tends to work better. People feel mm -hmm. better, they're detox, they're able to detox. Um, and we do that for you know at least a month. Um, and then we slowly start to reintroduce the foods back in. And so depending on how that person feels after they reintroduce that food, um, will determine whether they should stay off it for longer or if they're okay with that food. So, you know, the detoxing is a great way to kind of, kind of, you know, if you're kind of curious as to what foods are mm -hmm. bothering you, detoxing is sort of a way to kind of do that. So what type of clients come to you um, 
specifically when it comes to changing their diet, like getting rid of gluten? Would you say it's mostly men, women, um, you know, people in their 20s, 30s? Who, who are the ones that are going a little bit more gluten-free than, than anybody else? It's really, a, a, it's widespread, it's throughout. Yeah. So I get, okay. you know, parents bringing in their children because, you know, they're diagnosed with ADD or they get, you know, even infants come in with constipation and things like that. And a lot of times it is, you know, foods that are, that are causing the issue. Um, and then I get, you know, uh, adults. So they're really, it's really a broad spectrum of people that come in when it comes to sensitivities to foods. It really is incredible to me how, you know, how directly food influences the way you feel and how mm -hmm. your body is and how it reacts to things. You know, as I get older, I know that if I eat this compared to this healthy food, I'm not going to feel very good in the next few days. And it kind of lingers on it does, longer yes. as, as you age. So <laughs> uh, is that your recommendation to just be really in tune to what you're putting into your body? Yeah, be aware. How does your body feel? You know, aches and pains are not normal. You know, um, gas and bloating is not normal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, because they live with the symptoms for so long, yeah. they, they make it their normal. Yeah. Well, it's normal for me to have a headache. Exactly. Well, but it's all. not normal to have a headache all the time. So, you know, so it's just being aware that, you know, when the body's trying to tell you something, it'll show you in different ways and it'll keep trying to show you and it eventually will definitely let you know. So yeah. whether it's like skin type issues, whether it is digestive stuff, whether it is like migraines, whatever it may be. Whole slew of things. <laughs> so you brought in here, um, I guess some supplements or yeah. some products here that might help. Mm -hmm. So. Um, sometimes, you know, when I'm dealing with just somebody who's just got an intolerance or sensitivity mm -hmm. to, to gluten especially, then, you know, some people will try taking digestive enzymes um, specific to breaking down gluten. And, and some people will feel fine just by doing that. So right. they might eat, you know, a sandwich or a piece of bread, take the enzyme with it, and they don't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. But yet, if they don't take the enzyme with it, they do have symptoms. Oh. So that, that kind of a good indication whether whether you have So what a are these exactly not. then? What would you consider so, them? So um, so this one here, um, that's the enzyme so that I use enzyme. for to break down gluten. Now this is not going to be for someone who has celiac disease cuz at at this point you, you just cannot put gluten Like we established in the body. earlier yeah. in the show. Yeah, you, celiac and gluten Definitely don't mix. Don't, don't, don't mix, mix yeah. right? This is more for someone who has maybe an intolerance, just doesn't digest it well, mm. you know, feels kind of sluggish afterwards, that type of thing. So well, it says vegetable capsules in it. That's what it says, vegetable capsules. Is it, that what it is? It's just a capsule with enzymes in it. Oh, yeah, it's a vegetable okay. capsule. Um, and then other things that I recommend in general for just good digestive health, um, you know, a probiotic. So I've got this one here, um, which is just a probiotic. You hear that all the time. So if you so you recommend if you want to go gluten free, have this as a supplement, a probiotic. Um, yeah, and not even just capsule. for going gluten free, just mm. general health. This is just general health. This is good bacteria. Mm. We want to make sure we're getting good bacteria into our digestive tract to yeah. protect us from um, you know bugs, viruses, bacteria, things like that. Because mm -hmm. so we've done another show together all about the, the digestive system. Mm -hmm. it really. It just connects everything in the body. That needs to be intact. That needs to be healthy, right? Well, a large percentage of our immune system is in our intestinal tract. Mm. So if our intestinal tract is not working properly, then you know, you're going to be more prone to colds and flus or whatever else might be going around, mm -hmm. right? So you always want to make sure you have a good digestive base. Yeah, yeah. And, and just and going back to celiac, you know, your explanation earlier in the show about just the intestines and how it looks like, it's just, it's unfortunate if people do have that disease because it, it'd just be really hard to absorb anything. And do we know where that comes from? Do we know how people can, you know, what causes celiac? Well, um, for some people, they say there's a genetic component, component, others, mm. um, you know, it's just, it's just, the way the body, you know, creates this yeah. autoimmune to itself. So um, it's hard to say why it starts or how it happens. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. Once we get to that point where someone actually has celiac and they're very, very ill and they're, you know, not absorbing anything, 
um, until they actually go off of gluten, they will eventually get better once they just eliminate all gluten out of their system. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, going back to gluten and where where gluten is hidden. So you know, I've talked about bread and I've talked yep. about pastas and yep. things like that. Okay, so we we kind of get it now where yeah. gluten is, but people don't think about their lipstick. Mm -hmm. Lipstick may have. Well, what about lotions? What about our toothpaste? Mm -hmm. So that it can be hidden just about anywhere. So. Wow. You know, That's until incredible. you yeah, until you realize where it is, um, and you totally eliminate it, especially in talking specifically for someone with celiac. But um, I guess you know, food. If if, if gluten gluten free is is what you want to do, food would be the first main thing because that's yes. what we that's what yeah. we're consuming all the time absolutely it's Food everywhere like, exactly. it's everywhere right you go get a sandwich there's gluten you go get a piece of pizza there's gluten in there you know it's really hard not to eat gluten um, on a daily basis so until you know until you know that if you have something you know a, a problem with it mm -hmm. then you're gonna know to make different choices okay so for viewers who want to get more information about uh, you know about what they've seen today they can contact you through your website. Absolutely, yeah, oasishealth.ca. Yeah. Um, each month I put on a wheat-free, dairy-free cooking class. I do um, free lectures throughout, mm -hmm. you know, York Region. So you can jump on the website and find out where I am. Um, and, you know, there's my email there, obviously. Yeah. You can phone me. Yeah, so. Great. Rita, I want to thank you so much for sharing all your wonderful knowledge when it comes to gluten-free. Yeah, thank thanks you. Thanks for having me. For you tuning in at our home. Thank you so much for watching In The Know. Until next time. I'll see you on In The Know. Rogers TV viewer response line at 905-780-7114 or email us your comments.